And how fucking dare anyone out there make fun of Brittany after all she's been through. She lost her aunt. She went through a divorce. She had two fucking kids. Her husband turned out to be a user, a cheater, and now she's going through a custody battle. All you people care about is readers and making money off of her. She's a human! What you don't realize is that Britney's making you all this money and all you do is write a bunch of crap about her. She hasn't performed on stage in years. Her song is called Give Me More for a Reason because all you people want is more, 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 more! Leave her alone! You're lucky she even performed for you bastards! Think I did it again. Got lost it again. Oh, baby, baby. That's pretty good. You're going to get a lot of Britney uh, impressions this episode <laughs> because I've been told if I wasn't so fat that I could probably do Britney impersonations at birthday parties and stuff. Oh, I, I could see it definitely. Some lady come up to me, she said, if you weren't so fucking fat. <laughs> I was going to say, I you would... have the figure for it. <laughs> <laughs> she said, if you weren't so fucking fat, I would punch you in the face right now. <laughs> And I said, I know what you're trying to say. You're trying to say that I have a very nice Britney Spears impression. She said, get the fuck away from my house. Get the fuck away from my window. <laughs> it never happened. It never, ever happened. Welcome back to the Bro Ohio podcast. I'm one half of the amazing gate of the amazing duo, the delicious Nicklicious. I'm here with my bo- my most bestest friend, the entire intergalactic space universe. That's a really good compliment. Hey, guys, I'm Rob Dog. How's it going? It's going to be a really special episode this week. Yeah, hopefully. We're going to tag it as Free Britney Spears, but we're actually going to talk about like, COVID-19 and masks. <laughs> okay. Because we really we want to hear your opinions about the masks, because we're not... I fucking am so sick of hearing about the goddamn masks. I don't fucking care. I went to the barber shop today. Shout out to the wonderful people at the Vandalia Barber Shop here in Dayton, Ohio. It's the best. They're, they're the best around. I went and he said, I don't care if you wear your fucking mask. <laughs> and then I said, I'm Batman. And he said, I'll be your Robin. And we cut each other's hair. We did pubic waxes. <clears throat> I went to the bar the other night and um, trying to figure out how to drink a beer while having a mask on. It's, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. You just cut a little you need a little faux slot right in the front. <laughs> you can still kind of. Now, they were cool. But if you were up walking around, you had to have it on. But if you were sitting down drinking, you you're good. Did you go to the other half of their barbershop? What do you mean? Did you get, like, they have the one in Huber Heights and they have the one in Vandalia. Oh, I usually always go to Huber. Oh, okay. All right. I don't th- they drink beer, the Vandalia one? No, I said I went to the bar. The bar? I thought you said the barber. Like, nah, man. So where the fuck kind of alcoholic sits and drinks beer while he's getting his hair cut? <laughs> That's a <laughs> genius idea. Some barbershops do that, though. Yeah. They, they give you beer. Budweiser, because um, they automatically assume that we're all trailer trash around here. <laughs> right. Nope. This, no. Um, okay, so what's going to happen this episode, Rob? We're usually pretty good about expecting these things. Mm-hmm. We're going to get a lot of new people to listen to the show. They're going to have a lot of casual passerbys. Cool. If you don't learn to hate us in this episode, then go back to some of the other episodes. You're really going to fucking hate us. Thanks so much for being here. We're two lovable dads. Coming from our basement in Ohio, we're called the Bro Ohio Podcast. We've been around for around three years. We had an infinite list of things to listen to. We may be kind of irreverent. Is that what they say? Is that what they call us? Is that code I mean, for idiots? Not you know. We just we're not we're not bros. We're not bros. Oh yeah. yeah Some yeah. people listen like you're like oh are you bros. We're not bros. We're thirty something year old dads. Yeah. We have fucking mortgages. We have bills. <laughs> we have debt. We have all the things that you have, and a very childish sense of humor too. So. Our middle middle school humor has never left us. No. We're going to make a lot of jokes about sucking on each other's genitals. <laughs> oh, Not God. anyone else's genitals, each else's. No. Uh, we loyal. Parts, loyal to the, yeah. We're going to talk about shit in our pants, which I did not do this week, so hey, there's no job. need to 
thank you so much. You I did, so. First <laughs> fucking person that's congratulated me all week. No kudos for me. <laughs> we're going to talk about farting, putting our butts together and farting at the same time. That's a bit of a science thing we're working on. We're going to talk yeah. about peeing on stuff and inside of stuff. We're going to talk about weird shit. Our kids do. Rob's kids, he humps the fucking floor. Yep. And he, Rob talks about it sometimes. Yep. Don't let that get you turned around about what you're really here for. A dog. Everybody's like a sick dog. <laughs> He throws up, and then he humps it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My kids have problems, too, but we don't need to go into that right now. Okay, let's move on to our new Patreon subscribers. If you would like a shout-out at the beginning of the episode, it's only $1. Go to Brohio Podcast. No, go to Patreon.com slash Brohio Podcast. First off, help us buy an air conditioner for this basement. <laughs> it's hotter than fucking I bought air. one, but I just didn't bring it over because uh, when I first came down here. Yeah. It was good. It was kind of, I was going to move it back and forth between yeah. the rooms. It's a portable one, and it wasn't that hot. But as soon as you fucking got here. <laughs> it's me, man. As soon as you walk in this, in, the, in this place, it's like someone just lit the flames up, buddy. I don't know what it is. My palms are sweaty. I was down here. I was fine. Knees weak. Arms are heavy. Sorry. Watch out for the spaghetti. <laughs> this first one is for Kendall Belopflevich. I think oh, I got Jesus. that right. Okay. Happy birthday, Kendall. We are so happy to tell you happy birthday here at the Brahio Podcast. And we're sorry about your last name. We are, Yeah, it's a tough one. We were sent by your wonderful husband, E-Man, E-Man, Seaman, I don't know, E-Man, Seaman. E-Man. Like, E-Man. So happy birthday, Kendall. Uh, next, we have Amanda Elizabeth Rose Marie. Jesus Christ, cut down on the names. There's a Japanese sign next to it as well. I think <laughs> that's the Japanese character for life. Or beauty, I am. beauty or butterfly, I don't thank know. Thank you, Amanda Elizabeth Rose Marie. Chris Felix, uh, thank you so much. Felix, Chris Felix, thank you for your Patreon pledge. Uh, Nalin, Nalin. 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 Nalin, that's what I'm going to be doing to you later, Rob. <laughs> Nalin. Yes. <laughs> Kevin Ikes, Ix, thank you, Kevin, for your Patreon pledge. Jeff Clark, thank you. Oh, God <laughs> damn it. Nick Schmittendorf. Hey. Yeah, that's like kind of your name, kind of, that's both of our names together. <laughs> exactly, kind of. All right. <laughs> Thanks for your pledge, buddy. Anthony Easter. Thank you, sir. Not that fake-ass Jesus Easter, but the real <laughs> Easter. The real one, Anthony Easter. Yes. William Cordell. Thank you, William Cordell. And last but not least, Aaron Why? Thank you very much, Aaron. What a special time to be alive, Rob Dog. It is. We have a very special article, because every week on the Brohio Podcast, we bring you a, an article. Real shit. We don't get oh, the yes. fake ones. This one says Johnny Depp and Amber Heard accuse each other of peeing and pooping all over their house. This is the best story. I've, I've heard this, and it's so good. I haven't heard anything about this. Oh, dude, they're going through some ugly shit right now. All right. Well, let's tune the people in real quick. All right. Johnny Depp's libel trial against The Sun, publisher National News Group, has taken a turn for the scatological. Depp is suing the company over a 2018 headline that called him a, quote, wife beater after his ex-wife, Amber Heard, filed for both a restraining order and a divorce over allegations of domestic violence, which Johnny Depp has denied all allegations of abuse. On Wednesday, the court heard arguments over Heard's testimony that, that Depp attempted to spell her name in urine after a violent fight. I mean, that's that sounds like it's very... Uh... Um, thoughtful. Oh my god. And Depp's allegation that Heard took a whopper poop on the couple's <laughs> bed. <laughs> What's a whopper poop? I don't know. You think that's a big one or you think that's like one where you eat a whole bunch of those malted milk It just balls looks like shit. those whoppers. Little rabbit pellets. <laughs> just, oh man. <laughs> I like it. You think it's so fucking special? How about I write your name on the wall? Does it? Does this go into the text messages he sent to his friend? I don't know. This he, one, honestly, I read the first five sentences. And I said, oh, this is it, and I didn't finish it. He presented this text message as proof of this happening, and he said he's going to start calling her Amanda Turd. <laughs> <laughs> turd the herd. Heard the turd. It's so childish, but so funny. NGN's defense rests on 14 horrifying abuse allegation, allegations, which Heard claims in her written testimony occurred between 13 and 2016 heard claims that depp has been struggling with substance use issues and he repeatedly That's obvious physically and verbally verb verbally <laughs> abused her while high on wednesday the daily mail reports ngn's attorney sasha was questioned witnesses about depp's alleged attempt to spell Heard's name with his own urine after a blow-up fight that wrecked their rented house in Australia in 2015, it's legal to piss inside your house on your Man, wall in Australia. Let me ask you, what is so bad about Was he pissing on her? 
his wall. I mean, what's so bad what's about that? If it's his house. Fucking he the, wants to piss on his walls. He can piss on his walls. That Jeopardy uh, spoof on Saturday Night Live where they got Sean Connery. Yeah, yeah. He said, what's your mother's name, Trebek? I'll write it in the snow. It's in my handwriting. <laughs> it's in cursive. On Wednesday. Okay. Heard has alleged that during the fight... <laughs> I spell my name in the snow all the time. When I'm <laughs> I know. Pissing. Depp slapped and shoved her, leaving cuts and bruises. Estate manager Ben King testified that he saw cuts on Heard's arms after the fight. Oh, man. King also... Uh, King also notified that oversaw the cleanup of the home, a process that took more than 12 hours. He said he was quite sure that there was no urine in the home. I did not see any signs of urine, and it did not smell it. Which Johnny Depp probably doesn't have stinky pee. But he's really he's really pretty. As I would have done uh, had someone urinated around the house. Depp, meanwhile, has denied that he would have been able to do such a thing with his finger severed. Yeah. <laughs> it completely ticks. I guess it makes sense. <laughs> the court also heard arguments over whether Depp was angry or amused when feces were found in the couple's bed after a fight. Uh, yeah, here you go. It does talk about it. According to the Daily Mail, he wrote in a text message to a friend, <laughs> My so wife funny. left a whop of poop on my bed <laughs> and dubbed her Amber Turd. <laughs> <laughs> well, foreshadowing there. Depp claims the herd or one of her friends left the feces in the bed. Herd claims it was one of their dogs, Pistol her, and Boo. Her or one of her friends. All right, I'm going to need you all to poop in this bag, and we need to analyze whose ass this came from. I like the part where it says there was like a disagreement on whether he was happy or appalled that there was a turd in the bed. <laughs> oh, look at this cute little dad. <laughs> he's not mad. He's just disappointed. So here's what I want from you people that are listening to this show right now. If you and your spouse get in an argument this week, <laughs> I want you to shit in the bed and close the the cover is really hard or if you're like me and you live in a trailer and you sleep on a, a pull-out couch <laughs> shit inside the pull-out couch fold it back up that's called a mexican waffle iron i want you guys to report back bro podcast at gmail.com let us know how the turd extravaganza goes or if you want to one-up all that just shit in your hand and throw it at your spouse if they think it's cute <laughs> let us know if they don't think it's cute let us know as well we're interested to know the results of that process this is a very long article, but it just goes back and forth about them pissing on the walls and shitting in the bed, Rob. <laughs> this sounds like another normal day at the Brohio Studios, I'm going to be honest with you. And I would like to get into the content kind of quick this week, because there's going to be a lot of new people, and they're going to leave us reviews. They're going to say, it took them 12 minutes to get to the content topic. Well, here we are. This Rob, is what we do. We're at the topic. It's a little, little late now, but if you go listen to the rest of our episodes... Fast forward 15 minutes, you'll be there. You'll get right there. Yeah. And we also like to say thank you to the official sponsor of the Brohio podcast, Sticker Theories. You can get stickers of Brittany. You can get <laughs> stickers of poops and beds. You can get stickers of anything. They'll help you with your design. They'll help you get exactly what you want. Go to StickerTheories.com. Use the promo code all caps Brohio. They Sticker Theories has the sticker for you. That's not their slogan but that's the slogan i'm making for them <laughs> sounds good sticker theories will stick it in you they need to make a sticker of that slogan yes god all right rob some things you were a lot more privy to than than myself sure for instance if we were talking about deep fried foods cholesterol high blood pressure i could probably talk circles around you okay if we're talking pop culture music oh, yeah. artists celebrities that's my You've niche. got me covered. Unless it's Mick Foley, I don't know anything about <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> celebrities. I know a lot about Mick Foley. Yeah, I know stuff that it literally serves no fucking purpose to know in life, but that's, I do. That's what I'm talking about. That's why you and I come together. That's why we come. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to say to you right now. That's why we're so good together, because we come. Okay. Because yeah. we come together, we're good. <laughs> I'm picking up what you're putting down, my friend. I know you are. <laughs> so this week, it goes without saying, we're talking about Britney Spears. Uh-huh. In a nutshell, there is a movement going on currently, and those there, there's going to be some of you listening that are not Britney Spears fans, you're not pop culture fans, but just hold on tight, because if you like Jerry Springer, <laughs> you like just trashy stories... Something twisty and tur turny. This story has something for everybody. There's a movement going on currently. As we speak, many people believe that Britney Spears is being held against her own will that she is a prisoner in her own life. 
I'm a prisoner in my own body, but you don't see me fucking <laughs> making people make podcasts about me now, do you, Rob? No. Well, there is evidence to support all this. There is evidence to support the fact that she ultimately needs save from her fucking self that she can't manage her own goddamn life and her own goddamn affairs. That is the opinion of some people. And reading through this story and this research, you'll see that sometimes she does need save from herself. But ultimately, where maybe... So if you've listened to podcasts about this before, I think we might go a little different direction at the end than some of you may think. She's an alien. Close. Oh, dang. Not an alien, but she's maybe, a ghost. maybe <laughs> some, she's, yeah, she's just a hologram. She is not Britney Spears. She's actually the snake that Britney Spears is carrying around. Oh, okay. Okay. That's not true. Like, a lot more realistic than even that. Like Lord, Lord Voldemort. Yeah. Let's talk about... And that's why this episode's so perfect for us. Growing up, mm-hmm. what Britney Spears meant to us. <sighs> what's, let's start with you, because I feel like she might mean a little bit, little bit more to you than me. Okay. Um, first time I ever jerked off was to a Britney Spears poster. <laughs> was it an album cover or was it a poster? It was a poster. Okay. A little 14-year-old horny me. Yeah. Was she dressed up as the Catholic schoolgirl? Um, I really don't remember, in all honesty. Yeah. I think I did it again. I think she she was part of my my sexual awakening. Yeah, I, and that's what th- th- she was there when uh, we were coming of age. She was older. What I think she's like seven years older than us. Six oh, she, years. She can't be that much older than us. No, she's like five or six years older. Sorry. Yeah, she was born in nineteen eighty one. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. So five years older than five six years older than us. Yeah. She held the key. To many thirty-something-year-olds' hearts, mm-hmm. and not only for the boys, she was a generational icon for the females as well. Mm-hmm. Definitely, still to this day, we have a large group of friends that congregate together. Just you know, you close your eyes and you'll hear it at least one that one time that night. Somebody you'll hear someone say, "It's Britney, bitch," because. She is such, like I said, a generational icon for even the females that are that age. But she's just as much of an icon for the for the males as well. So she was kind of like all encompassing, bigger than God. Whenever she was doing her thing, yeah, it's such a timepiece thing too. I mean, it's if you really sit back and listen, she can't sing. I mean, she's she's oh, baby, not, baby. she's not special. The older she gets, the higher her voice is. She keeps she's holding on to that that kid voice though. I'll tell yeah, you what. She's, she wasn't she's killing that kid voice. It, I'm telling you though, she was just the right thing at the right time yeah, man. and she's held on for a long time. That whole late 90s early 2000s pop boom. Yeah. That, and that's one thing whenever she was getting big, there there was some really important people that said we don't the world doesn't have room for another Tiffany or another uh, Madonna. Yeah. That'll never happen again. There won't be another Cindy Lauper or uh, Paul Abdul. But Britney Spears proved all those critics wrong. Yep. So I, for one, I just want to get this off my chest. Mm-hmm. I was not strongly attracted to her as a young man. I okay. was much more of a Christina Aguilera guy. Okay. Maybe even call me an Avril Lavigne guy. But I just didn't, uh, I enjoyed Britney's music more than I enjoyed her look. Okay, for I me, get that. For me, she has a neck like a linebacker. <laughs> maybe it's from carrying that fucking snake around all the time. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know the answer, but she just, um, I don't know. From from carrying her family for so long. <laughs> That's exactly why her <laughs> neck is so big. If you have her, your her fucking dad hanging around your neck 24-7 yeah. like that's going to happen, man. Oh, man. So we're going to kind of go into a timeline of sorts. Kind of start from the beginning and go, I'm not... Okay, we sh- we're not going to touch on her accolades very much because if we... Tried to plug in her accolades to this entire podcast the entire way. We would be here for four or five episodes. Yeah. And I mean, it goes without saying that listening to this, no matter what your age, you're going to know who Britney Spears is, regardless if you're younger or, you know, our age or even older. I mean, she was so big, you know exactly, you know, what she accomplished. Or even if you don't, you knew that she was, you know, she was a big deal. Really big fucking deal. Yeah. She was everywhere. She was... 
the that generation's Michael Jackson mm-hmm. and a female version at that. So w- there's no need for us to touch on all the accolades through all those years. So we're going to turn it over to Rob real quick, and we're going to kind of flip this bad boy back and forth like a goddamn fucking omelet. We're just going to, speaking of sausage omelets. Hell yeah. I'm really fucking hungry right now, so let's get through this. Let's get this over with. All righty. So it goes without saying that many celebrities that start off as child stars grow up to have a lot of underlying issues that could have, you know, could have started during their childhood. So um, people that fit into this little um, little yeah. niche here, we got Michael Jackson, Amanda Bynes. Miley Cyrus, Justin Bieber had his time. Um, Olsen twins, Lindsay Lohan. Jeez, there's so L- many people. L- that Lindsay Lohan was. Oh, she was my my favorite person growing I up. I was in love with her as well. Gosh, she was so gorgeous. She was trashy, but I liked her for whatever reason. <sighs> mean but, Girls, Lindsay Lohan. Man, you can't you can't beat that. And I think I've Whew. I've talked about this before on here. This even goes back to young age for me. I never really lusted after celebrities that much and you know i thought like like christine aguilera i was like oh she's pretty but i wasn't like oh my god i want to fuck her on a skateboard i'm gonna (laughs) fucking skateboard i'm gonna fucking kill myself (laughs) i'm gonna fuck her i never acted like that i didn't didn't lust after i couldn't tell you who was who i just know i mean i like music more Mm -hmm. so than i like to look at people i just i didn't really lust after celebrities like that i did have a lizzie mcguire um poster in my bedroom that somebody got for me oh yeah and then people would come to my room they say why do you have that fucking poster <laughs> like, i was like don't know <laughs> so everyone thought i had a thing for uh hillary duff hillary duff which i didn't really i just she's a total babe now someone got someone got me the poster like a family member for christmas <laughs> someone that obviously thought i was a woman because i was chubby <laughs> and i had big tits <laughs> they're like Oh, that one nephew is that, or is that a niece? I don't. He got really puffy. He got really puffy nipples. I do know that he eats all the little sausages at the Christmas parties. That goddamn boy and them barbecue little sauce, little smokies. That fat fuck eats all. That's a girl. Get him that Lizzie McGuire poster. Girls love sausages. Who doesn't like smokies though? Yeah, I love them, dude. Them things at the shit. I had a cousin one time. My mom was making him for a holiday party, mm-hmm. and he came home drunk. He was living with us briefly. And she was cooking him the night before. This motherfucker came in. He doesn't listen to the podcast, so he can go fuck himself. <laughs> he listens sometimes. He ate an entire crock pot full of little Smokies. Oh, my gosh. And then he got drunk and came back home that night, and he threw up the entire crock pot of little Smokies on our front porch. My dad had to buy new AstroTurf for the front porch, and he was pissed off because it left such a gnarly goddamn stain. Man, I can imagine. That's the 90s for you right there in a fucking nutshell. Man. Threw up so much little smokies that we had to change the astroturf. That green glue on carpet. <laughs> yeah, it was a bad deal, man. Yeah, but there's a lot of dude, there's a lot of names that go along with the child. Like, uh, Macaulay Culkin. Mm-hmm. He was fucked up because he was taking the two inch power tower from uh, Michael Jackson. So that kind of explains the the issues with Macaulay Cul- Culkin. He's came back around though. He has. He's <clears> really <throat> he's really got it going on yeah, right now. He seems to be in a good place now. Solid dude. But why do um. Why does this shit happen? Do you have an opinion of why these kids get so fucked up? Because they don't get to have an actual childhood. That's exactly what I was thinking. They're around adults all the time. Um, They're probably seeing the shit that they shouldn't really be seeing. Uh, They don't really have time to live out what normal kids do. Yeah, that... um, And they're different. They're They're put on a higher pedestal that kids really aren't experienced in you know, in dealing with. And when you're being pretty much put up as an, like on the same level as an adult, you know, your entire childhood, it's like, you don't know any better. That would be like, if you went to your oldest son today and you handed him a fucking, the car keys and just said, all right, buddy, it's your turn to support the family now. (laughs) Right, right. Exactly. (laughs) That's a lot for a fucking kid to deal with. And when you're at that age, I'm sorry, I farted about two minutes ago and it's really rancid. And I don't normally do that to you down here in the hot box. I'll make sure to breathe with my mouth open. Okay. (laughs) Fucking eat it. <laughs> eat my shit. <laughs> Hold it like a bong hit. Exactly. When are you, you're at that age, you're at a very formal age where you learn to talk and engage people. You learn how to be a person, how to have a personality. I think that goes for today's today's shit. There's a lot of kids that are missing out on how learning how to become socialites, mm-hmm. learning how to engage humans. I, I was talking to the barber today. He's like, kids don't even like young men, teenagers. 
don't even know how to fucking shake hands anymore. They don't, not that we can shake hands anymore. Right, yeah. But he said before that, they don't know how to shake hands. They don't know that you look a guy in the, and that means so much as a man. I tell you, if you take your husband to a party and he, you're like, oh, here's my, here's my coworker, Tommy. And he, your husband shakes Tommy's hand. It's a limp it's dick. A dead fish. It's a dead fish. Yeah. Like it's like he's holding a flaccid dick in his hand. That's how he shakes his hand. <laughs> I promise you that your husband, like this. <laughs> unless your husband is Tommy, your husband's going to turn around and say, that dude's a fucking fruitcake. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Teach your sons to look a man in the eye and shake with a firm hand grip because that is the first and most important thing that other humans will use to judge him off of. Don't teach him to shake hands like he's got a fucking wiggly dick in his hand. That's embarrassing. <laughs> There's always the one kid, too, that tries overly hard to do it, so he tries to cripple your fucking hand when he does. Don't yeah. be that kid, either. And I've had this problem a lot where the guy shaking my hand will come in too hot, too fast, and I'm not ready for it, and he'll just grab my fingertips and, like, crush him. <laughs> and if that happens, then I'll just I'll flip it around, and I'll grab his hand, and I'll put it on my crotch, and I'll say, power, power move. move right yep, there, buddy. Power move. Look me in the eye while you put your hands on my privates. Or uh, one thing I used to do to my brothers is we would always greet each other with a handshake, and mm-hmm. I would spin around real quick and try and shove their hands in my ass, like <laughs> like a credit card swipe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not a good, I'm not a solid wiper, so that's not a fun place to be. No, <laughs> my butt <laughs> moist. Yeah. So I'm gonna pass this back to you. Sure. This uh, is let's... the official start. This is Britney's beginning. This is the official timeline of it's Britney bitch. Yeah. 1981. So Britney Jean Spears is born December 2nd in Macomb, Mississippi. Um, let's see here. We got Kentwood, Louisiana. That's where she was raised. And uh, 80- yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't rep Mississippi. Mississippi. Hell no. Nah. She's, she's a. She's like, I guess. Louisiana. I guess it makes sense if you're raised in a place as opposed to being born. Like, who really cares where you're born at is it doesn't in matter. comparison to where you grew up at? Unless you're my wife who's born in Phoenix and lived there for like a right. year. And I tell her that she's from Ohio and she starts raging. She's like, I'm not from fucking Ohio. <laughs> Which I wouldn't want to be. I, if I had to pick between the two, I'd probably choose Arizona as well. For sure. So, yeah. no qualms there. Sure. Uh, 1986, the year of Rob Dog. She makes her singing debut at her kindergarten graduation. She performs the song, What Child Is This? No idea what the fuck that is. Is that what you sing when you find your son humping the floor? (laughs) When when he's humping a pile of puke? (laughs) I'm just like, babe! (laughs) How's that feel, buddy? (laughs) Uh, 1990, first auditions for the Mickey Mouse Club at the age of eight, but is rejected for being too young. Yeah, That's a bummer. uh, And someone there at the Mickey Mouse Club saw some type of talent in Britney and she was ultimately referred to someone in New York where her and her mother immediately picked up shop and moved to a sublet apartment uh, someplace in New York City where she was an understudy for a Broadway show, show called Ruthless. So right. I, the she kind of got some really good roots right there doing that, that Broadway deal and met a lot of good people. Oh yeah. In 1992 she makes her first appearance on Star Search with yes. Ed McMahon. At age 10, she wins the first round of competition but loses the second round. Conspiracy? I don't think so. <laughs> so that takes us to 1993 where she auditions for the Mickey Mouse Club yet again. But this time she's accepted. She is 11 at the time. And, you know, her, her co starts at this time. You had Justin Timberlake, uh, Carrie Russell, Christina Aguilera. It's. Pretty, that's a pretty star studded there. Heavy hitters for the Mickey Mouse Club. Yes, dude. exactly. I didn't really watch the Mickey Mouse Club that that much. We never nah, really never had did. the Disney Channel right. that much. Yeah. It would come and go, and when we did have it, I would watch the shit out of it. But I didn't. I don't remember watching the Mickey Mouse Club. Nope. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen it. Yeah. Uh, Ninety four, the Mickey Mouse Club was canceled, so Spears moves back home to Mississippi. And to to not hop too far ahead of ourselves mm-hmm. right here. And you've come to the right place if you want to know what's really going on with Britney Spears. Some people just say she's fucking weird, but there's a method to the madness, you understand? Sure, always. One of the biggest things, you can go back to our 20 and Backspace program episode where they talk about... <laughs> I love how you're fucking tying this shit in. Fucking stay with me, Rob Dog. with you, man. Don't lose me, okay? Always with you. They think that there's a... Um, Part of the MK Ultra subculture, there's mm-hmm. a bit of conditioning going on. Okay. And one thing that's popped up in the media the past couple of weeks is I believe Pinocchio 
where they go through and they watch, they've watched Pinocchio and they think that it reminds them of this child sex trade thing going on. And then there's this one part where one of the fucking pirates or one of the people in Pinocchio starts talking about pleasuring the little boys. Really fucking weird, Rob. Hmm. But then we go back and you think about talking to Tony Rod Riggs and he talks about the conditioning and the MK Ultra mind control shit that he went through. Right. One of the biggest players in all of this, through all the conspiracy theories since MK Ultra started in the 1960s, is in the conditioning aspect, is Disney. That's one of the the main focal points that everybody talks about when they talk about this conditioning shit for the this MK Ultra, these mind control experiments is Disney. And it's not crazy that she was on Mickey Mouse Clubhouse for all those years and she was very closely associated with with the Disney alignment, okay? Okay. So just keep that in mind when we're going through this stuff, Rob. She might be a fucking alien or a reptile. I don't uh, a reptilian. We we're not really sure yet. Could be. And after in 1994, the Mickey Mouse Club was canceled, like Rob said. At this point, she packed up shop and she went back to Mississippi, I believe. Yep. Where she enrolled at Park Lane Academy, which is a private school for fourth grade through twelfth grade. Now, from there, she kind of had a. A normal childhood slash teenhood. She went to homecoming. She had a boyfriend. She did all the things that teenagers do. But she was quoted as saying she just desired more, and she knew that she was destined for bigger and brighter things. Makes sense. So she didn't stay. Uh, she didn't stay there for for very long. Sure. Let's go to 1998, where she's seven years old. And 17. She, 17, I'm sorry. What the fuck? I'm it's so... okay. I can read. I got you, buddy. Good, good. At least somebody can. 17 years old, and she is signed to Jive Records, which is the, that's the the big dog of the 90s pop scene yeah, right there. Yeah, it sure is. And um, records her debut album, Hit Me Baby, one more time in Sweden. Uh, she immediately sent to work with producer Eric Young, who was tasked with shaping her voice. That's a full fucking job right there, buddy. <laughs> Don't be so mean, Rob <laughs> Dog. And that's Britney's signature, though. That sound is ah, ah, like yeah. it's a cat getting fucked by a grown man. That's kind of <laughs> what it sounds like. Uh, he is the one that really helped guide her in that direction because initially, it really it wasn't what her voice sounded like off from the get go. It wasn't as I don't I I can't decide if she has a. I don't think she has a good voice. You know, I don't think she has a Christina, uh, an Alicia Keys or a mm -hmm. Christina Aguilera. I think those are good voices. Yeah, she's very, very average. I don't even want to say average. I think it's just like a distinct sound. It, it's very distinct, yeah. I'll, I'll give it a Talent wise, it's it, there's nothing real like flashy or anything about it. Where we can't fucking Christine. do it is talent, dude. Shit. I'll run okay. circles around her. Okay. I forgot you can do stuff like that. I can't. No, okay. she's, she definitely she definitely has All a right, noticeable kids. noticeable like voice. That's that's for sure. Yeah, it's very distinct. Sounds like like I said, cat yeah. getting fucked. But it works. <laughs> exactly. It works for the music they put with it. Yes. She also embarked on a shopping mall tour to help that's promote so her dope. upcoming debut album. Baby, one more time. And that was like the pinnacle of 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. Were the shopping mall tours. Unfortunately, all we had around here when we were kids is something called the Dayton Mall. <laughs> the Dayton Mall is where you went to die. You <laughs> shot. They had a movie theater there with rats that would walk around and bum change off of people. Can't do that today. There's no change. You still got rats. No yeah. change, though. I went, I, this, like, two days ago, I went to the gas station, and I bought an energy drink and, uh, like, five scratch-offs, because my wife would rather have scratch-offs than flowers. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> I, I fucking buy, hate scratch-offs. You like nice core? <laughs> you like fucking which one? You, I'm going to put my belly up on your back when I'm watching nice core. <laughs> That's what my wife's family does, man. Every fucking... Any any occasion you get scratch offs, I'm like just give me that fucking five dollars that you spent on these <laughs> yeah. damn scratch offs. So I got her some, and he said, um, 
not to be six twenty two. So whatever he said. I was yeah. Like, All right. I gave him uh, a ten. He's like, "Do you want your change?" I said, "Motherfucker, yes, I want my change." <laughs> what, the fuck? what does it? He's like, and he's like, point of the sign, cho- coin shortage. I don't want to sound like one of those forty year old dads on Facebook that with the really strong dick energy. That's like, "Oh, do take my, you take my mask. You do. I ain't wearing no mask." You ain't taking my freedom. Yeah. And that's a lot of, and I will say that, these anti-maskers, that's a lot of little dick energy coming from these big guys. Big time. Big time. Big time little dick energy. Oh, and yeah. And if you are one of those, take my mask away, it's a lot of little dick energy, my friend. Wear the fucking mask for a couple months. It's not going to fucking kill you. If it goes longer than that and it gets to the point where other stuff starts happening, okay, let's talk about it being a, uh, a fucking fight against our first amendment whatever but the coin the coin shortage that's another thing people they're you the next thing we're going to be a cashless society no there's nobody working in the fucking mint right now because everybody's <laughs> sick that's why we don't have any fucking change you retards that's pretty simple rob right hey i get it i don't read too much into this stuff i'm not we're two level-headed guys mm-hmm. And when something stinks, the Pizza Gate stuff that stinks. There's yeah, a lot of yeah. there's a lot of things that are kind of coming full circle right there. That just uh, it's hard to talk your way out of the coin shortage. You're just like we don't have anybody working in the mint right now because everybody a hundred million Americans got laid off from their jobs. There's no one, and you got people like me that have been vacuuming pennies and quarters out of their fucking floorboard since oh, yeah. they were 16. I don't give a fuck. I'm not bending over and grabbing the change. No, getting change is just an inconvenience. It is. And I suck the shit up in the shop back and I keep on going. <laughs> and there's people like us doing that stuff. And when everybody does that, because I know I'm not the only lazy person to rob. Hell in, not. in the world, Rob. Nope. There's... They need to make more change. There's no one there to make the change. Just like if the fucking tree burned down, there's nobody to make the Keebler elf cookies. There would be no there more Keebler elf cookies. That'd be a sad day. It would be a I'd sad I'd be more day. sad about that than I would be the damn coins. Highly overrated cookies, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> That's very true. Too. Not that good. No. Really not that good. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. All right. Let's well, go to the next part here. Yeah. Uh, 1998. Um, she goes on her first real concert tour where she opens for who else? But in sync. That's so fitting on many levels. <laughs> January 12th, 1999, her debut studio album, Baby One More Time, was released. It debuted at number one on the U.S. Billboard 200 and was certified two times platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America after a month. Now, worldwide, the album topped the charts in 15 countries and sold over 10 million copies in one year. Wow, it became the good. biggest selling album ever by a teenage artist. And the title track, the single, sold 500,000 copies on its first day and peaked at number one on Billboard Hot 100, topping the chart for two consecutive weeks. It Damn. has sold more than 10 million copies, making it one of the best selling singles of all time. Later about later in the year, June 28th, 1999, she headlines her first tour, Baby One More Time in North America. So she goes from opening up for NSYNC in 98 to headlining her own tour in 1999, so a Pretty year fast. later. Good for her. All this while doing remote learning to get her diploma with Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Good for her, man. Yeah. And that takes us to May of 2000. Oops, I did it again. Her second studio album was released in May. It debuted, of course, at number one in the U.S., selling 1.3 million copies, breaking the Nielsen Soundscan record for the highest debut sales by any solo artist. The album has sold over 20 million copies worldwide to date, making it one of the best-selling albums of all time. Pretty impressive numbers right there, right? Very impressive. No, you you don't get album sales like that anymore. No, you don't. Not with the streaming stuff. It'll, nah. never, it'll never happen again. Nope. And that's a lie that Hollywood And they say... I could do, I could do it all day, hey, Rob. Man, I'm not stopping you. I can do it all day long. Kind of turn me on a little. Later that year, she went on the Oops, I Did It Again tour, which grossed uh, only $40.5 million. Oh, that's it? That's it. September 7th, 2000. MTV Video Music Awards. Woo. That date 
is famous because that's when she ripped off her black suit to reveal a flesh-colored sequin bodysuit. Oh, yes, I remember that. She was just 18 at the time. God bless her. Also about that time, she confirmed that she was dating Justin Timberlake. What a power couple if they would have fucking stuck together. Man. You want to talk about some, but there's no way Justin Timberlake could just, I, I don't know if he would have been the peanut butter to her jelly or not, because there's some serious yin needed for that yang if you get oh, what I'm yeah. talking about. Oh, yeah. And he probably was just like, because Justin Timberlake doesn't seem that crazy. He seems like a pretty normal, funny guy. He really does. Like, he could kick it down here in the Brohio Studios. If any of you have a contact for Justin Timberlake, <laughs> we'd love to talk with him. Podcast at gmail.com. And set that up, we will send you a sticker. <laughs> right? Hey, it's worth it. We will send you a... If, <laughs> if you set us up with Justin Timberlake, the Ohio Retirement Fund will give you $100, a t-shirt, and a sticker. I think that's hey, fair. That's fair. I think we can afford $100 <laughs> for a Justin Timberlake interview. And we're going to get him... We're just going to talk dirty to him the entire time. Dirty pop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely going to be upset with us. Yeah, and that's a really infamous, that's when she wore the flesh-colored sequin bodysuit. Yeah, man, iconic. Yeah, I thought you were saying I come did. <laughs> I'm sure I did. I come did. I came. Yeah, and then flash forward to September 6th of 2001, almost a, a, a year later, mm-hmm. she performed Slave for You at the MTV uh, Video Music Awards with the large albino python. There was a public outcry from PETA after this performance. Nothing there was PETA. plans for Britney to be their spokesperson for their anti-fur campaign. Mm-hmm. And since she was posing with a snake, they said, no, you are abusing that snake. You're using it outside of its natural habitat. There are PETA's trash. Dark web gay porn where men are putting ball pythons in each other's assholes and you're worried about Britney walking across the stage with an albino python draped right. across her shoulders she was probably scared to death no she's actually probably so medicated that she didn't fucking realize <laughs> she wasn't even swinging it like a lasso either she probably thought it was a dead baby laying across <laughs> her back <laughs> they got it in a snake they, um, and that's what Peter was crying out that they were treating the snake poorly I thought the snake didn't get mishandled at all. I don't know. The only I only know how to handle one snake. <laughs> and yeah, they they're gonna c- complain about that, but they kill more animals than they save. Okay, cool. <laughs> Fucking Peta? hypocrites, Peta? Yes. What do you mean they kill more animals than they look at? Look it up. Uh, look it up, doggy. I'm not savvy to this at all, so I will yeah. have to do some investigating. Yeah, they kill more animals than they put down. They they take all these animals and end up putting them down more so than they end up helping so oh good i'll keep that in mind next time i'm writing a check to them for that's where i make that's where i donate every year (laughs) okay yeah help get my taxes down a little bit. definitely don't do that anymore okay yeah i'll take care of that (laughs) so we're moving on to july 2002 in july 2002 spears announced that she would take a six month break from her career however she went back into the studio in november to record her new album the July 1st, 2002, ends her four-year relationship with Justin Timberlake because she cheated on him. No, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. I read on the contraire that it was him who was just not willing to be tied down. He was kind of... Uh, that's what the whole... Couldn't keep his dirty pop in his pants. I don't know. That's what Crimey River was about. About him and uh, uh-huh. her? Uh-huh. I didn't know that. Supposedly she... Well, I know supposedly she messed around with... I don't remember who it was, but then there was also Colin Farrell, too. <laughs> okay, yeah. So. We're in for, due to copyright laws, we're not allowed to play any of that music on this podcast. We have you. We don't need a beep, 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 that's what yeah, I like. What you I like the information you're providing. Hey, yeah. So August two, uh, August 29, 2003, she, oh, yes, it's good. Her, or no, this is jail. She makes out with Madonna during the performance of Like a Virgin at the MTV Video Awards. I didn't think it was that hot and steamy of a kiss. I no. thought it was more of a publicity thing than anything, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it really was. Um, January 3rd, 2004, Mary's childhood friend Jason Allen Alexander at the Little White Wedding Chapel in Vegas. 
and annuls the marriage 55 hours later. I did not know this until today. Yep. Jason Alexander, that's my brother. Yeah. <laughs> no, this, I don't think this guy is my brother because he was... He looked pretty cock diesel with black hair. That's not my brother. Yeah, he was uh, her like high school boyfriend or something. She flew him on a private jet out to Las Vegas. Yep. And Jason said he was always the guy behind the, behind the scenes that no one knew about. So he was kind of, after she left her small town, mm-hmm. she maintained contact with him and always talked to him. When um, The thing was, the night that they got married, this is uh, 2004. She would have been roughly... I don't know, 23, 23. something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They were both fucking drunk out of their goddamn gourds when they went to the Little White Chapel and got married. <laughs> Is anybody sober that gets married at the Little White Chapel? I, I, I think legally you should have to com- be of le- you should be able to drive a car before you go in there and get married. <laughs> I, I agree. And one of my most favorite scenes in all of wrestling history is when Triple H takes Stephanie through the drive-thru. She's drunk and it's trash. She's passed, passed out, out. And he's yeah. talking for you. I do. Thank you. And he's talking for her. That's one of my most favorite scenes ever in wrestling. But that's yeah. how it really happened, too. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh, when she was, when, when Jason Alexander was interviewed, he was asked if they were doing drugs that night. His reply. Maybe. Well, he was very, uh, this is uh, pretty straightforward about it. He said, alcohol's a drug, coffee's a drug, cigarettes a drug. Yeah, we were doing drugs. That's that's <laughs> one way of saying, yeah, we were snorting all the fucking coke that night. We were doing all right. the bad stuff. Her mom, dad, and managers raged that there was obviously no pre- She was worth fucking millions oh, at man. this point. And she's like, I think I get married. And they went down. They got married. There was no prenup involved. Don't need no prenup. And Jason Alexander's like, I've hit the <laughs> fucking right. lottery, Jack. Right. The marriage was annulled. The annulment said Spears, quote, lacked understanding of her actions to the extent that she was incapable <laughs> Of agreeing to the marriage. Uh, Alexander said he signed the annulment papers because he was, quote, being a nice guy, and he hoped they might get back together sometime soon. In an interview with E, a few months after the annulled marriage, Spears described it, It was me being silly and being rebellious. Sorry, I can't can't do a Britney Spears voice without singing. No, that's okay, man. I, I, I accept it. But it was, I guess, like... You know, it was, she never had these opportunities to live out Mm -hmm. being a regular person up to this point. She just wanted to live life on the wild side, so she married this guy. Um, I ain't shaming her. If I was him, I'm thinking jackpot, dude. I'm going to get you. I would have done whatever I could have done to keep that annulment from happening. I'm very comfortable in my marriage and my beautiful family that I have, but I would have been burying my bone that night and i would have been i mean can you imagine being the like the follow-up after justin timberlake that's like that, that's a that's, confidence boost right and there even later on down the line if he did meet somebody else and he just in those new his new wife says oh you have a kid already that's kind of he'd be like look it's not like that i was laid up with britney spears one night i'm getting five hundred thousand a month for the rest of my life <laughs> because i took one for the team we took one for the team babe I would have. I didn't know you yet, but I loved you already. <laughs> but I was just doing that to secure our financial future. I was thinking about our future kids. <laughs> yeah, exactly, there man. There you go. Got to do fucking what you got to do. <laughs> and during the... No, that's that's yellow. That, that's you. God, yep. that scared me right uh, During 2004, uh, Spears became involved in the Kabbalah Center through her friends with friendship with Madonna. And that's just a really weird religion that all the celebrities were practicing back then. Back then, they wore red bracelets to kind of say, "Oh, I'm K- uh, Kabbalah." Like live strong whatever. bracelets. Yeah, kind of like that. And they're like more like thread string bracelets. Ah, hippie bracelets. Okay, it's more of like a living good type. It wasn't super religious. It's just gotcha. weird. But it's okay. like Scientology aura around it, though. Oh, okay, so it was fucking weird. It was so, really fucking <laughs> September eighteenth, two thousand four. Ugh, she marries backup dancer Kevin Federline. Womp, womp, womp. That fat piece of shit. And this, and this is where all her fucking troubles come from. He must have a cock like RoboCop, because oh, there's dude. no way he's getting there with charm and class. Hell no, nah. he looks trashy as fuck. He is trashy. <laughs> he looks like someone you would find cutting weeds at the back of the trailer park with a fucking <laughs> nothing gas-powered, something he made. Um, 
and a lot of people say this is kind of where she started to spiral out of control at oh, this yeah. point. I think it kind of started when she married the fucking guy from her childhood and then old it in 55 hours. Uh, tomato, tomato. <laughs> shortly after September 18th, which is when they, Kevin Federline and Brittany uh-huh. got married, she was photographed walking barefooted out of a Ventura, <laughs> California bathroom. Yummy. <laughs> I love how this is news. <laughs> and Kevin Federline that night was probably like, I'm going to suck on her toes. <laughs> oh, Didn't know she did that. Probably sucked on her toes after she was tap dancing in that bathroom. Ugh. But that's just like, that's the thing. You could take the girl out of Mississippi. Oh, yeah. And it, we're that not, is the Mississippi shit right there. That's but, Louisiana shit. But you can't take the Mississippi out of the girl. You want to say what I'm saying? Yeah. And we don't have very many Mississippi listeners because they don't have fucking Wi-Fi. Down they there. don't have internet. It's, it's okay. Not even internet, dude. They don't have anything. They don't have power. You got to shove an antenna in the ass of an alligator. They got gators and grass. That's all they got down there, dude. There's nothing. In October of 2004, Spears took a break to start a family. Aww. Uh Shortly thereafter, uh, May 21st, 2005, there was an incident where she vomitly vomited in a swimming pool. In- you said she vomitly vomited. <laughs> she, she pukingly pukes. She vomitly violently vomited in a swimming pool in, uh, I believe it was Las Vegas. Apparently, uh, in this incident, she was chilling around the pool, and there were some people around the pool that were like, Holy shit, it's Britney Spears, some some vacationers. And they're like, Britney, tell us about your life. She's like, and then, blah, she just started Alpha. puking in the pool. Alpha just, move. She wanted the pool to herself. <laughs> How else do you secure a pool to yourself? That happened to us once. We went to the pool, and the lifeguard at the front was like, we're probably not going to be open for about two to three hours. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? He said, Somebody puked in the pool. And I said, how often does this happen? He said, it happens a lot more often than you uh, would of course think it does. does. It went to King's Island one time and a kid pooped in the pool. <laughs> but it wasn't two hour away. It was like only like 30 minutes. Let me ask you something. Did sure. you see the kid that did it? I didn't know. It, we, were walking, okay. we were walking up to that wave pool as people were making their way out. Still trying to see if I got any warrants <laughs> in that shit that happened that day. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um... So she vomits in the pool. Everybody gets out of the fucking pool. Sure. After they get out of the pool, everybody's covered in vomit. The people that were in the pool, Brittany's covered in vomit. They get on the side of the pool. They all start fucking each other. Like they get, I don't, Rob, I wasn't there. So it's hard for me to speculate right here, but she runs back to her. No one, no one fucked anybody, but she runs back to her room. She's completely mortified, but she was throwing up because Da-da, she was pregnant and she had I would have kept the puke if I was them. <laughs> May have been like ambergris after after a while. Like whale puke. I don't know if you if you don't know what ambergris is, it's a whale puke and you can get it and it makes high end perfume and cologne. No way. Yeah. I've never heard of this in my entire life, Rob. Yeah. Oh you should look up um what's that uh what's that? Maybe it's whale shit. I don't remember which one. It is one or the other. What's that fruit? That smells like a dead body, but it tastes really good. You know what I'm talking about? I do. Um, I think it starts with an N. But there's videos online of people letting their cats smell it, and it's uh, one of the most fantastic things ever. Hang on. Um, He'll find it out for us. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, durian? Durian. That's it. Yeah. That's, yep. There's definitely an N in there, but it's at the end. I, I'm dyslexic. It was backwards. Yeah. Yeah. It smells rotten, but it's sweet. Yeah. Oh, we need to get some of that. I'm well, down. After um, she throws up in the pool, she gives birth, not at the pool. It was a little while later. But in <laughs> September. <laughs> she pukes and births the baby in the pool. So like four or five months later, she gives birth to her first son, Sean Preston. Aww. Better line, who's named after the patriarch of the family. <laughs> Poor kid. Yeah. Could you imagine having. Damn, the kid's 15 now. It's Kevin wild. Better line. Yeah, that is. That's the year we graduated high school. I know. Fucking wild, dude. Wow. I'm fucking old. So now we're at February of 2006. Several pictures surface of Brittany driving with her son, Sean, in her lap. I just put this baby here, right here in my lap. And I remember when this happened. It was Why? it was fucking crazy. <laughs> I remember when that, that 
next week, uh, my dad was taking me to a doctor's visit, and mm-hmm. I just laid in his lap in the front seat. He's like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? <laughs> so I just want you to love me like Britney Spears <laughs> loves Sean. <sighs> so Britney goes on the defensive course and claims that it happened due to um, a frightening experience she had with paparazzi, and she was just trying to quickly get away from them, which, I mean... It's not a good idea to do that, but I could definitely see that as plausible. The I mean, circumstances make sense the way it's explained, and she is quoted right here. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll let you do it, because you, you can do the Britney voice. I can't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Paparazzi were coming up on the, on the sides of the car, which is a scary situation for me. They're banging on the window, and that's not something I want my baby to experience. So I get my baby in the car, and I go home. So, I mean, I, I just feel like they're talking, they're taking cheap shots. The driving incident was from, like, five minutes away, and Starbucks is, like, right there. <laughs> Sounds so basic. It's so Britney Spears. <laughs> I can't go anywhere without someone judging me. You know, I did it with my dad. I'd sit on his lap, and I'd drive. We're country. You know what? I mean... She has a point. <laughs> I hate to say it. I mean, because think about it. We all fucking sat in the front when we were. We were pretty far along in car seat technology in 2005, Rob. <laughs> that's that's true. 2006. Even, that's true. Here. Things had advanced a little bit. She was driving a fucking Mercedes, I think. <laughs> there was. Yeah. We had car seats. We had. Sh- 2003 is when the hooks become mandated in the back seat for the, oh, for yeah. the car seats. April of 2001. Nope. Two thousand April first of two thousand six. There you go. <laughs> Sean Preston falls out of his high chair at a home. Okay. Shh. Brittany is questioned by the Los Angeles Police Department. I'm sorry. She's questioned by the L.A. Department of Child Children and Family Services. Isn't this the same people from the fucking Netflix thing where they let the baby die or the little kid die that everyone's talking about right now? The little kid that was abused really bad and just beat the shit out of you had cigarette burns and bruises oh, on me died. Yeah, I don't know if it is. They're the it's the same fucking agency, okay. dude. They suck dick, is what they <laughs> suck. They said that uh during the investigation they found out that the nanny dropped him on his head, bruising it. So the nanny essentially was paid twelve thousand dollars to take the fall. Yeah, I, that's yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. not on record, that's not official. Spears and Federline, this is so trailer trash. They <laughs> took him to the ER six days after he was dropped on his uh, head. Six days that's, afterwards. That's a bad move. Uh, yeah, yeah. They just take him to the fucking ER and like, he's <laughs> Kevin Federline. There is not. <laughs> there, The combined IQ of those two is like a fucking sweet potato. <laughs> it really is. They're in the, yeah, you think we should take him to the hospital? <laughs> it just sounds like one of those monkeys clapping cymbals. Yeah. <laughs> their brains. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, get this straight, Peg. <laughs> I know we dropped him on his head like a week ago, but ever since we did that, he can't open up his left eye, and he's been really fucking hard to potty train. I know he's only a few months old, but the... The child and family services got involved, and mm-hmm. they they obviously didn't think there was anything alarming enough to make a move to do anything, which is kind of what the um, L.A. Family Services, that's kind of their M.O., is they don't fucking do anything. <laughs> September 12th of 2006, they give birth to this, well, Brittany does, Kevin Federline probably didn't do anything. He probably wasn't even there. <laughs> yeah, I was filming, dude. <laughs> they give birth to their second son, Jaden James Federline. Just about... Two months later, Brittany files for divorce from Kevin Federline. The following day, Federline filed a response to Spears' divorce petition seeking physical and legal custody of their children. So this guy is so much of a shit stain. Well, let's, we all are, in the media, he's portrayed as so much of a fucking shit stain that mm-hmm. he can't do anything right. But she is so bad off that she files for a divorce, and immediately the next day he says, no, i got to take those kids away from her. So that goes without saying that she was probably doing a really poor job of parenting, or he was just trying to punch her right in the gut and go for yeah. what she loved. So it's kind of hard to say either way what was going on right there. Dicky situation. Very st- Divorces are always just oh, trying to... Months and months of trying to cut each other's throats. Uh-huh. It's a such a horrible process. 
Uh, according to a representative for Federline's lawyer, the divorce filing, quote, caught Kevin totally by surprise. She really started to visually, visually struggle in the media after the split, and she was pursued relentlessly by the paparazzi. She couldn't go anywhere. Huge news. She could not do anything without a camera, a hundred cameras right in front of her face. February 14th, 2007, she checks into a rehab facility only. She says, this is for all my juggalos and juggalettes. <laughs> Fuck this shit. Whoop, whoop. She checks out one day later. Brittany's mental health struggles and rumored addiction became highly publicized at the exact same time. Uh, just a day later, after she checks out of the rehab f- facilities, when Spears walked into a hair salon in Tarzana, California. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. That's pretty good. And asked the stylist, quote, save my head, which the stylist would not yeah. shave her head. Good call. She politely refused and said, I'm not going to be the dumb bitch that sh- shaves your head, Spears and head forever known as the person that fucks your melon up. Right. When the stylist politely refused, Spears grabbed the clippers, <laughs> stood up on the counter, and began to shave her pubic hair. No. Did, oh. did you do that? I don't think she. The paparazzi. No, she, I would hope she. Britney Spears, we don't know. We don't know. Don't She's know. weird. She grabbed the <laughs> clippers and she shaved her head herself. Paparazzi, who are always up Britney's ass, were oh, yeah. there to capture every moment. After she left the salon, she got a tattoo at a parlor in <laughs> Sherman Oaks, California, when the artist, the tattoo artist, asked Britney why she shaved her head. She replied, I don't want anyone touching me. I'm tired of everybody touching me. <laughs> It'd be a lot easier if you just shit your pants <laughs> than shave your head. <laughs> and that, that's the thing, man. Is it's just like you can tell she was just out of it. Yeah, dude, she just, was gone. Yeah, completely out of it. Just gone there at this point. Poor thing. She said, uh, "I'm tired of everybody touching me, and I don't know why <laughs> shaving your head would make people stop touching you." <laughs> it's like. Ugh. Yeah, she's, and I think she was just confused at this yeah, time. she's just overwhelmed, mentally done. Yeah. Additionally, she told the following to the MTV uh, 2008 documentary, for the record, quote, I was going through so much artificial stuff with my kids and Kevin at the time. He just left me and I was devastated, which I, she filed for the fucking divorce, but nonetheless. Well, maybe he was not there enough to where she had to make a move. Okay. Makes sense. Maybe people oh. thought it was just me going through cra- going crazy and stuff like that, but people shave their heads all the time. <laughs> true, that's true. <laughs> Not women, but true. Not uh, super famous women either. I was going through a lot, but it was just kind of like me going through a little bit of rebellion or feeling free or shedding stuff that had happened. You know, just five days after the head shaving incident, Spears attacked a paparazzo's car with an umbrella. The event took place following Spears' visit to the home of Kevin Federline, her newly estranged husband. Months later, Britney Spears claimed that the umbrella attack was in preparation for a new <laughs> role she was playing. <laughs> you know, she's fucking auditioning for Game of Thrones. Mary fucking Poppins. <laughs> Not Mary Poppins. Mary fucking Poppins. <laughs> oh, my God. Say it with me. Sports. Sports are back the delicious nicolicious has been waiting for this since march but the time has finally come my bookie is a home run slam dunk triple overtime game winning shot all wrapped up into one i love it you love it and that should be all you need to hear in order to start betting like me today with my bookie it's easy you bet you win they pay i bet on the reds for their opening day for a win I bet some money. I won some money. It's that simple. If you're feeling good about your team's chances this year, which we all are, be sure to check out my bookie's World Series future bets. Bet on the Reds. Bet on the Reds. Nothing shows you believe in your squad like betting on them before the season has even begun. But why stop with baseball? My bookie has basketball, hockey, football. They've got it all. My bookie is already accepting bets on all your favorite NBA, NHL, and NFL games. There's never been a better time to start exploring the world of online sports betting. So come play, bet, and win with Delicious Nickalicious. Join today. And my bookie will match your deposit 100%, plus they'll toss you a free, 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 free $10 MLB future wager. All you got to do is enter the promo code BROHIO, B-R-O-H-I-O, when signing up. 
Remember it, mybookie.ag. The terms are simple. You bet, you win, they pay. And this episode is also brought to you by Blue Chew. You hear that sound? That's the sound I make when I'm all hyped up on Blue Chew. Guys, remember the days when you were ready to go Ready to get up and get down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We've got the answer for that extra confidence you've been looking for in the bedroom. Listen up. BlueChew.com. That's blue like the color blue. Brings you the first chewable with the same FDA approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can take them anytime, day or night, full stomach, empty stomach. It doesn't matter. It's chewable. So it's ready to go when you are ready to, ready to go. And if you could benefit from some more confidence, where it counts, Blue Chew is the fast and easy way to enhance your performance. Blue Chew is prescribed online by licensed physicians, so you don't have to go to the doctor's office or wait in a line at the pharmacy. It ships right to your door in a discreet package, and they're made in the USA. Blue Chew prepares and ships directly, and they're much, much cheaper than the pharmacy. Right now, the bros of Ohio have a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use the promo code BROHIO. All you're going to have to pay is $5 for shipping. Again, that's BlueChew, B-L-U-E Chew.com. Enter the promo code BROHIO. It's going to be free for you guys. BlueChew is a better, cheaper, faster choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the BROHIO podcast. Hop on over to BlueChew.com and use the promo code BROHIO. And I need to get serious for just a second, guys. Is there something that's interfering with your happiness or your goals. I know I had a friend recently reach out to me. He was dealing with the death of a loved one and he was having a hard time getting over the hump. I referred him to our friends at betterhelp.com. They have licensed professional therapists that are ready to help you right now. You can connect in a safe environment. It's super private and it's very convenient. You can start communicating in under 24 hours. It's not self-help. It is actual professional counseling. You can send a message to your counselor Anytime you like, you'll get a timely response. You'll get a thoughtful response, all without ever having to leave your house. You can remain in the comfort of your own living room. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It is way more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is also available. They have licensed professional counselors who specialize in anger, grief, self-esteem, relationships, sleeping, trauma, you name it. They have someone that can help you. Anything you share is completely confidential, but most of all, it's convenient, professional, affordable, and helpful. Check out all the testimonials that have been posted on their website daily, and it is not a crisis line. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. And I want you to start living a happier life right now today. And as a listener of the Brohio podcast, you get 10% off your first month by visiting BetterHelp.com slash Brohio. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's BetterHelp.com slash Brohio. So March 2007, uh, she ends up reaching a settlement with Federline on the divorce. That yeah. motherfucker got paid. Oh, he hated. Uh, July 30th, same year, divorce is made official. September 9th, performs a disappointing version of Give Me More at the MTV Video um, Music Awards. I remember that. She looked completely fucking trashed out of her face, and well, she barely moved the entire time. What's crazy, man, is I, I'd never watched it before. Yeah. And I went today, and I watched the entire thing. Oh, man, it's sad. And I'm just looking at this. And you can go to YouTube and type in uh, Britney Spears, Give Me More 2007, and it'll be the first one up. It's like 60 frame rates per second, HD, 4K. It is miserable to it's watch. sad. It's embarrassing. And I likened it, and I said, this reminds me of something. I thought about it. You know in, like, seventh grade, when they let you start doing talent shows and then you have like four swamp donkeys audition for the talent show, and they come up and they do like a they just lip sync uh, to a song and a dance. Horribly chore. And, 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 <clears throat> this reminds me. I have to fix this. I have to fix this real quick. I said, Bogans, Brogan, Bro, Brogan, uh, Bogans are ugly women in Australia. No, okay. that's not true. A Bogan is a hillbilly. Okay. A bush pig is an ugly woman. <laughs> bush pig, fuck. <laughs> That's almost as bad as a swamp donkey. A bush pig is an ugly woman in Australia. 
<laughs> That's some fucking well put, oh, Australians. I was sitting there at the bar, I couldn't help myself. There was a bunch of bush pigs sitting up at the... I offered them some Folgers. The Australian for beer. Which isn't even Australian. No, it's not. You talk. You ask Australian people about Foster's beer, and like, what the... F- What's a Foster's? <laughs> yeah. What the fuck are you talking about, mate? My guess is the, the person that made Foster's is Australian. Maybe. I don't know. I don't fucking... It's a gimmick, regardless. Yeah. But I watched this performance Sad. and it's like those when the first the girls they're like oh, we're gonna be in the talent yeah. show and it's so slow and unchoreographed and stupid and it's hard to watch and all you want to do is pick up a tomato and <laughs> rocket launch it at the fucking stage it was like when all the indian girls at our school used to do their it's, yeah. <laughs> their song and dance i know it was not to knock the culture or not the, at all you know, the people but those girls did a really terrible fucking job some people had stage presence some people don't <laughs> Britney Spears had no stage presence. No, this, no. unfortunately. Yeah, and it was pretty pretty painful to watch. Yeah, she was just like a, I don't, I don't know. It was, it was really pathetic. It was supposed to be her big comeback, and it was not. No, not at they, all. They panned the camera to Sean P. Diddy Combs, and he's like, "Man, what the fuck is this shit?" <laughs> exactly. Man, what the fuck is this? So, a month after her performance at the VMAs, she loses physical custody of her kids to Kevin Federline. Oh, good. The attending judge cited that. What he believed was Spears' habitual, frequent, and continuous use of controlled substance and alcohol as cause for her losing custody. In January of 2008, visitation rights with her children are suspended after an encounter with police. Uh, Spears refused to relinquish custody of her sons to Federline's representatives. At that point, she was hospitalized at Cedars Sinai Medical Center. Or Cedars, yeah, Sinai Medical Center. After police that had arrived at her house noticed or noted that she appeared to be under the influence of an un- unidentified substance, mm. the following day her visitation rights were suspended at an emergency court hearing, and Federline was given sole physical and legal custody of the children. She wow. was committed to psychiatric ward of Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center and put on a fifty-one fifty involuntary psychiatric hold under California state law. Damn, they even 5150'd her. Yep. The court placed her under temporary and later permanent conservatorship. Conserv- is that it? Conservatorship. Conservatorship, there you go. Of her father, James Spears, and attorney Andrew Wallet, giving them complete control of her assets. And she was released five days later. So she was released five days later from the uh, the medical center, not of this conservatorship. conservatorship. Okay, this is where we're getting to the Free Britney movement right here, Rob. In 2009, they were the conservatorship, I'm sorry, Wallet, Andrew Wallet, and Jamie Spears, her father, were made con- permanent conservators, and Spears returned to her tour and returned her successful career as, a, as an entertainer. And the reason I can sp- speak very candidly about the first-hand specifics of a conservatorship, my wife and I just got done going through the gnarliest court battle for this mm-hmm. shit with her grandfather, who's 97 years old, has severe Alzheimer's, um, thought he had dementia, but it's delirium. He's just no idea what is going on. It's truly a sad thing to watch. But we had to go through a lot. Well, my wife did. I kind of oh, yeah. stepped along with her. It's a big, big in-depth process to actually get yeah. conservatorship. And the reason they make it so hard, you are stripping the person of all of their human rights. You are stripping them of all of their financial rights. You're taking away their driver's license, their ability to vote, their uh, access to their own money. They, she, Britney Spears literally has to get written fucking permission from her dad to leave her house. She's not allowed to go anywhere. She's not allowed to do anything. She can't spend her own money. She can't drive a fucking car. She can't vote. She can't do anything because of this Wild. conservatorship that's in place. Mm-hmm. And for those of you that do not know, we're going to cover this as we round out this episode. Her dad, you know that whopper shit that Johnny Depp took in (laughs) there, Amanda Turd, the herd, took in the bed? That's what Jamie Spears is. He's a fucking turd. And if you could not possibly get this family any more turned around, 
Not only is Jamie Spears the name of her father, she's got a fucking sister named Jamie Spears, too, which makes this shit really hard to read about. Well, James and Jamie. Yeah. No, his name is Jamie. His name is Jamie Spears. I'm telling you, Rob Dog. You wrote James here. Did I? You did. Hold on a second. (laughs) I could be. uh, If I'm wrong. Because I know Jamie Spears for sure is her. Is her sister. Brian Spears. But James. Either way, James and Jamie. That's kind of crazy. Well, they call him Jamie. He goes by Jamie. His his birth name might be. Like you naming one of your daughters, Nikki. Yeah. Or me naming one of my sons. Oh, wait, that wouldn't be my one of my son. I guess if I had a daughter <laughs> naming a Roberta. <laughs> naming one of my sons Roberta. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's been said that the conservatorship appears to have been a major factor in enabling Brittany to regain her health and to getting her career back on track, which I do not believe. Spears' father has control of her well-being and jointly oversees her finances with co-conservator, the lawyer, Andrew Wallet. What a good name for a lawyer. <laughs> Meat Wallet. <laughs> uh, is that a butthole? Or... <laughs> That's a pussy. Uh, you boys want to come over here and see my Meat Wallet? <laughs> got a bunch of bush pigs over here. <laughs> What's the Meat Wallet look like on a bush pig? That... Oh, God. Uh, asking the questions. Are really I don't even want to know. The reality of this situation is that every single purchase made by Spears, mm-hmm. who's now 30... This is kind of old, but now she's, what, 39? Is recorded in court documents. Goddamn, she's 39? Yeah. Fuck. And according to this arrangement, she cannot make major decisions about her personal life or finances without both of their approvals. This has since changed a little bit. Uh, Spears, this is what it was like when uh, when they initially did the conservatorship. Spears' status and progress are monitored by a court investigator who reports on her progress once every other year. Oh, jeez. Conservatorships are frequently used for the elderly, yeah, or mentally or physically disabled. What is a conservatorship, you ask? Under California law, a conservatorship is put, or I'm sorry, enacted when a judge appoints a person or organization to take responsibility for an adult on the basis that they cannot care for themselves or manage their own finances. The person placed under their care is the conservatee. Conservators are placed are often placed in charge of the elderly. So uh, Brittany would be the conservatee. And they're put in place to infirm or those, uh, like I covered before, it's mostly for people that have serious physical or mental disabilities. And they are these court orders are monitored by the court through investigators and examiners. There are two types of conservators, a conservator of the estate and the conservator of the person. One person can fill both roles. Okay. All right. Take a little break there for a second. Um, a little cooler in here now. So it's starting to feel a little we bit turn better. Turn the fan on. You guys might be able to hear, but God damn, it's like 95 degrees down here. Yeah. So if you can hear it, oh, well, it's okay. Uh, February 2008, um, she regains some of her visitation rights with her children. Um, those rights increase over the next few years, which, you know, that's good. Um, well, if she wanted to see him, I guess if, if she wanted to get away from him, I guess <laughs> sure. it's bad for her. Um, May, 2009 confirms that she is dating her agent, Jason Trout, Trawick. Um, I don't even know who that is. I don't either. He later quits being her manager to focus on their relationship. Like, cool. Can't mix business and pleasure. Uh, January, 2009 Spears and her father, James obtained a restraining order against her former manager, Sam Lutfi. Ex boyfriend Adnan Galib and attorney Joe Erdley, all of whom court documents claim had been conspiring to gain control of Spears' affairs. There was, which is exactly what his dad, her dad was doing. Yeah, but that's a. And that, Can't have too many hands in the pot. And then we talked about this in the beginning, Rob. I said. Was he possibly saving her? Because, but look at all the shit she was doing. Right. She was barefoot in a fucking bathroom <laughs> at a gas station, dragging her feet through piss puddles. If that doesn't scream, kill me, or like I need help, there's nothing that screams. Yeah. Riding around with the baby in the lap, uh, shaving her head, which, like, it's not. It's fine with me if you want to shave your head. Shave your asshole, not your head. But then a couple days later, she beat a fucking car up with an umbrella. She had shit going on inside of her head. So maybe her dad was saying, okay. And and I put myself in his shoes. Mm -hmm. 
my daughter becomes a TikTok fucking sensation because <laughs> all she does is TikTok dance all week long. I can't get the girl to put her arms down. She's <laughs> so my nickname for her is Tic Tac. I say uh, Tic Tac. And uh, when she hits it big, she's TikTok rich. Right. She's worth a hundred and fifty million dollars. <laughs> She starts shaving her head, lighting shit on fire, beating cars up, fucking doing drugs. If I see that she is squandering all of her riches, because as in my mind, I'm thinking she's going to want that $150 oh, yeah. million dollars when she's 50 years old and she's working in a goddamn factory putting pretzels in a box or <laughs> attaching the heads on dildos, whatever you do with a fucking warehouse when you're 50. Right. You know, you feel me? Mm-hmm. And as a dad, I'm thinking, I got to do something to step in, but you don't have any power because it's not like you can walk up to Chase Bank and be like, ground him. You, you know, who I'm Britney Spears dad and i'm gonna need all that right now and unmarked right. 20 bills yeah can't it'd be, do that it'd so be you hard know, as like a parent. court injunction some type of court order and that's kind of what he did mm-hmm. and through all of this okay people are saying she's a slave she's a prisoner she's this she's that but through all this no one has said the bitch is out of money that's what True. you haven't heard through all this. He keeps her working. So what's more important, money or freedom? Freedom or money? Snakes. She's got snakes. They took the snakes away from her. She's not a bush pig by no, any means. Not at all. So he's trying to break the word down. Conservatorship. You are in charge of conserving all the things that belong to the person that is the conservatee. Conservatee. You have to conserve their shit and that's why you're the conservator makes sense so i I don't at this point i'm kind of like maybe he was just trying to save her from herself but the guy is a goddamn asshole (laughs) yeah very much so So, yeah uh, so uh this restraining order forbids uh lutfi and galib from contacting spears or coming within 250 yards of her her property or family members uh april of 2012 Trawick became a co-conservator of Spears alongside with her father. And, and that's pretty wild April. to me that they let a boyfriend be the co-conservator. Very at this weird. Point. That's kind of that's trippy, man. Yeah, I don't like that at I all. I don't like that at all either. Boyfriends do not mean good things. <laughs> no, no, no. So in January 2013, Spears and Trawick ended their engagement. Trawick was also removed as Spears' co-conservator, restoring her father as the sole conservator. Now, on September 17, 2013, she appeared on Good Morning America to announce her two-year concert residency at Planet Hollywood Resort and Casino in Vegas, titled Britney, Piece of Me. It began on December 27, 2013, and included a total of 100 shows throughout 2014 and 2015. That's a lot of shows. Yeah, and one I have a video here. Mm-hmm. It's... Um at the height of the back and forth between Britney Spears and her dad. Okay. This is a voicemail that she left for, I think she's leaving it for. Was for her for calling help for her father? No, she's not calling her dad. Okay. She's calling like an attorney's office. Okay. okay. To say, look, are we sure we're going to be able to keep my dad from doing the things that he says he's going to do to me? Okay. Received January 21st. At twelve twenty nine a.m. Hi, my name is Brittany Spears. Um, I called you earlier, um, but I'm calling you Kim because I just wanted to make sure um, during the process of ending the conservatorship that um, my father has threatened me several times that um, you know he'll take my children away. I just want to be guaranteed that everything will be fine with the process of um, you guys taking care of everything and um, things just being the same as far as my um, custodial time. She's so soft-spoken. <laughs> she is. It's really hard to understand. So I will uh, go back and tell you what this says. It says, Hi, my name's Brittany Spears. I called you earlier. I'm calling again because I just wanted to make sure that during the process of eliminating the conservatorship that my father has threatened me several times that, you know, he'll take my children away. I just wanted to be guaranteed that everything will be fine with the process and that you guys are taking care of everything. The things will stay the same as far as my custodial time. That's it. Bye. So she was very scared that her father 
So not only do you have an ex-husband holding her kids above her, but now you have her father who's in total, total control holding her kids over and I'm as not, well. I don't think he had the conservatorship at this time, but he might have. He may have. But he was threatening to take her kids away. If he's threatening to take them away from her, I mean, he had to have had it at this time, I would assume. And But then he also would have... And it doesn't match up for me if the money... But we would never know if he was taking her money or not. Yeah. She can't go to the bank. I would assume... <laughs> No, I, I would assume that he definitely could have been. Oh yeah, he for could, sure he could have could been, have. and probably was. I would, ha- and I if we looked into his lifestyle, I don't know what his day job is. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's being her conservator, but I guarantee this fuckwad does not have the resume laid out that could say, "Here's my resume, and that's how I've you know made my money to live in this house that I'm living in." I bet you he doesn't have the credentials that, that line up, if you get what I'm saying. He's just not... I don't know what he did before his daughter became a mega pop star, but right. I, I can imagine that it was not enough to to sustain his lifestyle that he has right now. Well, let's see. I'm trying to figure out what he did. Let me see here. Probably like a, he drained the shit the shit tanks at the trailer park. <laughs> let's he see. was like most fitting for me. On, uh, let's see... Where are we at here? So she, on October 18th, 2018, she announced her second Las Vegas residency, which that that's all still going on. Well, she announced that she was doing Britney Domination, which was set to launch at Park MGM's Park Theater on February 13th, 2019. She was slated on this tour, Rob. Okay. To make... Five hundred and seven thousand dollars, half a million dollars per show, and these residency shows—they're doing these like every night, every other night. They're doing hundreds of dates every year. She was going to make five over five hundred thousand dollars per show. Oh man, it would have this would have made her the highest paid act on the Las Vegas Strip. However, on January 4th, 2019, just a little over a year ago, she announced that the residency was canceled after her father had a near fatal colon rupture. He blew his fucking butthole out. <laughs> it looks like he was uh, some sort of a producer. You the producer of ruptured colons is what he was. <laughs> In some sort. I don't know if it's music or movies. I don't know. You know... um, I had a ruptured colon one time. Oh, yeah? How'd that go? Is that fart trick I was talking about at the beginning of the episode? Oh, yeah. you put two buttholes put two up. together? That is one of the naughty downsides of farting into another man. It's well, a lot of pressure, man. There's a lot of reverse, a uh, lot of centripetal force going through there. <laughs> yeah. A lot of, uh, you know, I'm not going to confuse you guys with the scientific terms. But when you go farting butthole to butthole, you run the risk of seriously rupturing your colon. Oh, yeah. And that's what happened to Jamie Spears in this incident. She cancels this domination residency in Las Vegas where she's slated to make 500 k per show Ugh. because her father had a near-fatal colon rupture. He <sighs> blew his butthole out so bad that he almost <laughs> fucking died. <laughs> He was on his deathbed, and the family was saying goodbye because he blew his butthole out so bad. Her team also announced that Spears would go on an indefinite work hiatus, putting all activities and commitments on hold so that she can spend time with her family. In March of 2019, Spears' co-conservator, this stuff and you got to pay real close attention. She has she slated for the show. Her dad blows his butthole out. <laughs> After he blows his butthole out, she's taking a, an indefinite hiatus. Then the co-conservator, the attorney, attorneys are all about fucking money, dude, and cheddar. And I promise you, him being the co-conservator of this conservatorship, mm-hmm. he is making bankroll because I know what we're paying the stupid fucking attorney is taking care of her grandpa's <laughs> For right. circus peanuts. Yeah. How I many thousands of dollars? We got to pay this dickhole who doesn't even fucking do anything. Fuck you, man. If he's, li- I know he's listening. <laughs> I know he's listening to the show. Fuck you. I know that this attorney was getting his pockets lined for doing uh, the Britney yeah. Spears conservatorship. Oh, yeah. But he stepped down as co conservator in March of 2019. 
Uh, Andrew Wallet resigned and said, quote, substantial detriment, irrepar- irreparable harm, and immediate danger will result to the conservatee, Britney Spears, mm-hmm. and her estate, all of her money and assets, if the relief requested herein is not granted on an ex parte basis. So he is saying that this estate being ran by Jamie Spears is fucking fucked up right now. So much so that this attorney wanted to completely distance himself from the entire conservatorship. He stepped down. He resigned. He no longer wanted anything to do with this process. So you got the dad blowing his butt all out. Very important to, to for that part. <laughs> Because you got to really be doing some funky shit to have your blood, your butthole blown out. Mm-hmm. She goes on a fucking indefinite work hiatus. The co-conservator of the estate steps down completely. All of this happens the exact same. And the biggest, the biggest part, she completely decapitates the tour itself, the domination tour. She says, right. "I'm not doing it." The same month, Spears reportedly entered into a psychiatric facility to focus on self-care amidst stress from her father's butthole blowing out. The The illness on her father was the reason that she entered the, the, the self-care program at the psychiatric facility. Another podcast called Britney's Graham alleged, according to information from an anonymous paralegal source, hmm. that Spears had been held against her will in the facility since January of 2019. And there is, uh, I don't have it with me right here. Uh, there's an audio recording of this voicemail that was left for Britney's Graham. But the audio recording says, quote, what is happening is disturbing, disturbing to say the least. Basically, Britney was in rehearsals for domination. It came to Jamie's attention that Britney was not taking her medication as prescribed. She was missing a lot of doses and just full on not taking him. So they got her to the doctor, and the doctor said, okay, if you don't want these medications, let's get you on a new one. She refused to take the new medication. Either you, Jamie said, either you take this medication or the show is off, and I'm pulling my support, and you can't do it. And she has to have his full support and permission Crazy. to do any type of tour like this to be outside of any her decision house. Yeah. She has to be, he has to give permission. Brittany did not follow Jamie's instructions. So she, so Jamie, he was true to his word. He pulled the show. He verbatim said, quote, blame it on my illness. He even claimed that Brittany did not willingly enter the wellness facility. That has given birth to, to the hashtag free Britney movement, which saw support from a number of celebrities such as Cher, Paris Hilton, Mario AC Slater Lopez, <laughs> yep. Miley Cyrus, Courtney Love, Rose McGowan, Courtney Heidi, Love. Yeah, that bitch needs to die. <laughs> yeah. Heidi Montag. Is that even a celebrity? Yeah, no. Jeffree Star, Eve, and Tanash. I think it's Tanash. Tana- 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 it's not Takashi69. You know that. It's like Tanash. <laughs> Following the podcast, there was social media backlash to the alleged abuse of power and violation of human rights that Spears has endured under a conservatorship by her father and the mismanagement of Lou Taylor, who was responsible for initiating the conservatorship. So April 16th to 17th, 2009, Brittany's mom, Lynn Spears, appears to weigh in on the drama when she began to like posts supporting the f- hashtag free Britney movement. She really weighed in. She's a big old bush pig too. <laughs> One such tweet reads, I really hope you are supporting Britney and trying to end her conservatorship. I really hope your ailing ex-husband isn't uh, keeping your daughter somewhere against her will. These comments are in response to a particularly cryptic Instagram post depicting one of God's warriors on their knees. In her, in her Instagram Britney's it's so weird. So weird, man. But I'm going to, in just a minute, I'm going to blow the fucking top off of it, and you're going to figure it all out right now. <laughs> all right. Uh, on April 22nd, 2019, fans held a protest outside of the West Hollywood City Hall, drawing attention towards the prolonged conservatorship, suggesting that she was being detained against her will. Spears posted a video Instagram um, 
or posted a video on her Instagram account on the April 24th, assuring fans all is well, and also addressed leaked emails about Lou Taylor, claiming that they were written by her ex-manager, Sam Lutfi. Spears left the facility the following day. It was reported on April 24th, 2019, the Spears would have a new conservatorship hearing for May 10th, 2019. Spears attended the hearing with her mother. Following the hearing, an investigation was ordered into Spears' conservatorship. Uh, May 6th, 2019, according to court documents obtained by E! News, Britney's mom filed a request asking to be informed of all matters pertaining to the singer and her conservatorship. Sources close to Britney's conservatorship told The Blast, that's fucking sweet. That's my nickname in college, The Blast. (laughs) That Lynn spoke with Jamie before filing her documents. The outlet reports that Lynn wants all of the information as it officially comes in from the court. Britney's team has been supportive of Lynn being involved with the ongoing situation, and at this time, she has not made a move to become an actual conservator. May 9th, or I'm sorry, May 7th, 2019, and this is quoted by E! News, um, Lynn and Jamie Lynn flew out of L.A. to try to figure out what's really going on. They are staying with Brittany and trying to make heads or tails of the situation. The insider adds that Lynn is extremely upset to see Brittany in the condition she is and feels that she can't help her. The singer's mom wants to know what's really going on so that she can sleep at night. The anxiety and worry is taking a toll. She wants to see Brittany get better and to be healthy and happy, and right now that's not happening. And that takes us to September 3rd, 2019. It is reported that Spears' father and conservator allegedly abused her 13-year-old son, Sean Preston. (laughs) Law enforcement spoke to The Blast to report the incident, stating Kevin Federline filed a police report on August 25th, and it was later reported that Jamie Spears was um, reportedly so enraged during a verbal row with his 13-year-old grandson that he broke down a door trying to get to the young boy And the incident has sparked a child abuse investigation. All with a blown out butthole. (laughs) So Brittany then sent her son. be pissed if you had to come after me. (laughs) Boy, if I got to get up with this blown out butthole, I'm going to shit all over your fucking head. (laughs) I got a fucking butthole hanging out of my butthole. All the buttholes. (laughs) So Brittany then sent her sons back to their father's home, despite it still being her um, custodial visit time. And this has caused a huge stink, the fact that she's so... uh, Oh, yeah. She's not... She does not miss with her time with her kids, and shit was so fucking bad right here that with her dad that she sent him back to Kevin's, which she that's, never. She yeah, never that's does. crazy. Um, Spears' two sons have since been granted a three-year restraining order against their grandfather. Yeah, dude. Wow, that ta- that takes a lot to get it against the grandpa like that. Yeah, but he'd probably be easy to beat up with that fucking <laughs> compromised <laughs> poop. Poke him in the <laughs> asshole and you win. Yeah. Uh, May 22nd of 2019, according to documents obtained by E! News, Britney's dad has requested to expand her conservatorship outside of California. Jamie intends for his legal control to be acknowledged in Florida, her home state of Louisiana, and Hawaii, where she often vacations. And just uh, two months later, I'm sorry, this is a year later. This is just a this few weeks recent. ago. Yeah. yeah. July 10th, 2020. Brittany goes on Instagram and she addresses her critics after she starts sharing more videos and more. And this is re- This is all within the past month. So man. Weird. She's starting to release a lot more videos and pictures of her day to day life. She explains that she understands, quote, how, s- how some people might not like my post or even understand them. But this is me. Be happy. The mother of two continues. Oh, no, that's not her quote right nope. there. <laughs> this is me being authentic and as real as it gets. I want to inspire people to do the same and just be themselves without pleasing others. That's the key to happiness. So, in her, th- all of this stuff, the, the Instagram here recently has gotten a lot more cryptic. Oh, man, yeah, it's, it's really weird. In all of her videos, she's disheveled. Her hair's fucked up, which... I mean, hey. Dude, I'll lay around here in sweatpants and cut off t-shirts all day. With your balls hanging out. And if, yeah, with my balls hanging out because I don't have any clean underwear. <laughs> if someone caught me on Instagram in the middle of the day, I would look disheveled as well. But this... You don't see... It's like... When you watch these videos, it's kind of like a, where someone... It seems like someone's like, dance, monkey, dance. Like... 
Yeah. And it's almost like being forced. It's really weird. Right. There was a, there was a whole thing where in one of the comments, I think I may have, I don't know if I mentioned it on here or if I was talking to somebody else when I said that. There was one comment where, you know, that person said, if you need help, wear a yellow shirt in your next video. And one of the comments in the well, next yeah. video, she wore a yellow shirt. Well, that's what I cover in yeah. this next spot. But in September of last year, 2019, Jamie temporarily stepped down as Britney's conservator. Hmm. But it was only temporary. It was more of like a, a thing to show her. Like, it, they, he wanted everyone to think he was stepping down for right. good. But it yeah. was just temporary until Smoke and mirrors. January of, 20, of 2020. And there was another... Someone named Jody Montgomery. Montgomery. That was. I think she might be an attorney. Or they have. They have firms out there that are conservator. They're just specifically for these type of things. Where okay. they just Act as conservators. And just the other day, July twenty third of twenty twenty, four days ago, her brother Brian confirms Britney's desire to have the conservatorship lifted. He explains that the perceived limitations her legal status imposes on her. Explaining, quote, it's very frustrating to have whether someone's coming in peace to help or coming with an attitude, having someone constantly tell you to do something has got to be frustrating. On the same day of the interview, a routine virtual hearing was conducted regarding the conservatorship. Uh, another hearing is scheduled at a later date, but the coronavirus stuff kind of has this stuff oh, yeah. in, in limbo. But these recent... Instagram videos and pictures really people are picking up the pieces that she's the breadcrumbs that she's laying down. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like she is indeed crying out for some type of assistance, some type of help along with these recent videos that she's been making. In one of the initial videos she's seen wearing a black dress, much like Rob alluded to Mm -hmm. many people commented on the Instagram live and advised her to wear the color yellow in the next video video. If she is indeed in need of some type of assistance and like fucking clockwork in the very next video, she's wearing a bright yellow shirt with flowers on it or something. What was strange about the next video where she was wearing the yellow shirt in the caption, she made mostly the, the caption, you know, Instagram, you put the caption. With yeah, the yeah. She mostly talks about the floral bouquet that she's carrying in the video that was made for her. But the entire video is just her walking back and forth, staring at the camera. And she only has the bouquet out for a few seconds, but much of the video is kind of like her walking back and forth in front of the camera showing off her yellow shirt. Yeah. It was what it almost feels like. And you know, it's kind of, there was probably a thousand other people on there that said, wear a red shirt. If you're in trouble, wear a green shirt. If you're in trouble, I don't know how many people said, wear a fucking yellow shirt. If you're in trouble. Yeah. But she, it felt like she was making it known that she, what she had on for yeah. some strange, maybe she wasn't alluding to that. And not Maybe that this, she was. Not that this means anything. Have you noticed that she has a a strange, like, she, you don't sound weird. She has a gap in her teeth now. I in know. between her two front teeth. And I she, haven't noticed. It's a pretty big gap, and she didn't used to have that. It's really weird. Not that that means anything, but it's something to notice. It's like, oh, it's kind of weird. Body double. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get to that in a second, too. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. okay. Uh, someone posted in that video of her walking before, back and forth that if you are still in trouble, wear a bl- wear a blue shirt in the next video. In her very next video, she's wearing a sky blue shirt. Oh, I didn't know that. Recently, Brittany has posted pictures to her Instagram of a keyhole. It's like a giant keyhole, and it's like you're looking through the keyhole, and when you're looking through the keyhole, you see the giant outside world. It's... Uh, and she's also posted another picture of what looks like a child being locked up inside of a cage. She then posted a meme on her own Instagram. Yep, she's fucking shit posting memes and stuff on there. <laughs> that said, She said, uh, I put myself in timeout until I can play nice with others. This may take a while. And the caption for that's that. such a boomer meme. It is. And the, and, right? But that's the thing. She's, I can see that with like, with like, um. Sylvester the cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a very boomerish meme. Yeah. What the caption um uh, what she yeah, she's in the caption with that meme, she said, "I wonder how long this will take. How about a decade or some shit like that." Ouch burn. Much alluding to the fact yeah. of her conservatorship, conservatorship. undoubtedly. Mm-hmm. 
Some people are trying, uh, are pointing to the fact that she might be trying to leave a paper trail on her Instagram. Oftentimes, some of the pictures that she is posting, she is putting captions like, this was taken two days ago, or this was taken a day ago, or this was taken on Father's Day, or this was taken today. She's putting that on all of her posts, much like she's trying to create a paper trail. Okay. Uh, and... Like I said before, her hair and her makeup is always fucked up. In one video, she goes on there specifically to tell people, like, hey, I'm okay. But her eyes, her eye makeup is all smeared. It looks like she's been crying all day and her hair is a mess. She's not okay, man. I can see in that it's, she's it's not like okay. Body language and just um, yeah. cues, you know, show different, you know, or different reality <laughs> than what she's actually saying. This fucking facility. Okay. You ready to hop on the magic card? Oh, yeah. Take me down the fucking rabbit hole. This, oh, God, this facility, the psychiatric facility, uh-huh. the last one that she was entered into in January. Yeah. You look it up on uh, Google reviews. It's got one, one one star review. It says, this place is fucking miserable. I hate it. Yada, yada, yada. It ruined my marriage, something. But that's the thing. What kind of deep care facility like that? Only has one, everything. Rob, you probably have fucking more reviews on, on Google right. than that. But it only had one one-star review. And also, in the conspiracy community, it's been pegged as a MK Ultra reprogramming site. Hell yeah. And a lot of people that have come forward that says they are they're, uh, victims of the MK Ultra program point to this facility as an MK Ultra reprogramming website one of the biggest things about the mk ultra the the entire program is uh they need monarchs these monarchs are the people that they put forward in the media to uh mind control us okay Mm -hmm. so we have all these different tactics that the the government in my in mk ultra and these conspiracies they have all this different shit that they're doing to f- gain control of our minds and ultimately get us, turn us into sheep, get us to do all the different sh- shit they want to do. I hate to use the fucking word sheep, yeah, yeah. but that's ultimately what they're trying to do. And they have these monarchs, the faces that they use, whether it's Hannah Montana, whether it's Britney Spears, whether it's Justin Timberlake, all of these, they say the number one victim of the monarch MK Ultra program is Angelina Jolie, that she's the number one She's the number one face of this program. Okay. But then you go through and you start shuffling through Britney Spears' Instagram. I don't fucking... Let's... Britney Spears' Instagram. I'm going to pull it up right now. And you start shuffling through her Instagram. God, she looks like fucking hot dog shit right there. <laughs> she she looks like if a cigarette could be a person. <laughs> I feel bad for her, dude. Um... You start zooming in on a lot of these pictures, and I don't know how far back you got to go, but there's huge monarch butterflies that she starts to put in all these pictures um, in her Instagram, which has alluded to many people. And uh, there's been some people that said that she's posting some pictures of monarchs, uh, monarch butterflies, and then quickly taking them back down, which I don't know if that's the case at all. Yeah. But if you scroll, you got to go a little further back. But there was a, a few different posts back to back to back where there was a, an uncanny amount of butterflies and like monarch butterflies. But in these conspiracy communities, the monarch is the biggest bird in the entire MK Ultra project because they do all of the fucking heavy hitting and they do all the stuff in the media that they, that they want done. I cannot say for sure whether she is part of MK Ultra or not. That's I, it's such a fucking weird rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, in this, uh, this I don't even know what this is. Where am I at? <laughs> You're pretty much. Wait, where are we at? Right. Okay, you're you're right in this so area. So she has no rights anymore. She can't spend her own money. She can't vote. Then we run into the fact that the facility that she was held at is an MK Ultra reprogramming site. Mm-hmm. The creation of an alternate persona. 
Remember I said a second ago, a fucking body double. And Kevin Federline has even alluded before and said that she, he thinks she might be two different people. Like he's, he's like, I don't fucking know, man. She might, she's two different. She might be. And you're saying you're seeing one girl with a gap in her teeth. Yeah. And she didn't have a gap back whenever, she, whenever you know, she first became famous. But there's a primary, the primary goal of the Monarch Mind Control extension of the well-recognized and CIA development MK Ultra and full uh, Monarch Mind Control is noted as a mind control technique that combines occult rituals, psychology, and neuroscience to create an alter ego within a desired subject. Now, I'm not saying that she has a different body. Like, there's a mm-hmm. fucking body double. But this project, no. this monarch mind control shit, the way they're, th- they're th- is she is given a snap word or a, something that triggers an ultimate, an alternate persona inside of her to where she, hear, she hears a certain sound. Rosebud. Rose. In this instance, there's evidence that... I don't know what the word is. It's like squirm, squall, or I can't remember the fucking word. But I have evidence right here of her hearing a word and completely 180, turning hmm. around, being somebody else all altogether. Sweet. Within uh, the monarch mind control, the subject is often referred to as the slave, while those responsible for both applying the technique and activating it are known as the handlers. It is believed by many that once fully programmed, monarch slaves are then used on demand by an elite group to carry out rituals, performances, deliver messages, etc. That are in line with a desired outcome. Some of these people that have said to have been in the, the monarch mind control program, Lee Harvey Oswald, Saran Saran, Charlie Manson, John Hinckley Jr., Mark Chapman, uh, David Kor- Korish, uh, Timothy McVeigh, oh. and John Salvi. Um, those are just some of the names. And there's another part of the the research that says Disney movies and the other shows are so important to the programmers. They are the perfect hypnotic tool to get the child's mind to disassociate in the right direction. Most of the Disney films are used for programming purposes. Some of them are specifically designed for mind control. If Brittany truly was victimized by uh, the the monarch mind control, then the, tr- the the toll it seemed to take on her over time is certainly worth noting. Drug use, mental instability, uh, questionable parenting choices, and the random shaving of her head are just some of the behaviors that many have brought into question in regards to Brittany over time. Perhaps the strongest piece of evidence to potential manipulation and the existence of a secondary persona within Britney is this clip that I'm about to play you right now. Hell yeah. Where she sits down with Diane Sawyer. Always Diane Sawyer. It is, man. And the beginning of this interview, she is sitting there. She is paying, she is paying deep attention to Diane Sawyer. Mm -hmm. She's answering the questions. Yes, no. (laughs) Ha ha ha. Yeah, sure. Yeah completely normal and then she hears this word i don't know it's an s word i don't remember what it is but it's like uh, whatever (laughs) whatever the fucking word is listen for the fucking s word (laughs) right but she hears it okay Uh, and this is from i think it was just in quotes there a second ago it was okay this is from capture the magic o one uh, youtube channel this person has 946 subscribers so. hell yeah you know it's reliable britney spears interview with Di- diane sawyers after watching this clip i have come to the conclusion uh, she okay britney hears the word spasm from diane sawyer and when she hears the word spasm <laughs> britney goes into like this hypnotic rant slash tailspin where she can't even, it doesn't even look like she can function as a human Just anymore. A downward spiral. Yeah. And it all happens as she's starring as a kind of villain in the tabloid accounts of supposed jealous arguments and then a horrible breakup with her self proclaimed first love, Justin Timberlake. You've had a rough year. You've had a year that would test a lot of people mm-hmm. illness in the family. Mm-hmm. A breakup, this spasm of publicity about what happened in
the second that she said spasm, yeah, she completely moved. Did you see her like lock up and sit straight up? Yeah. And the whole time before this, she's she, kind of hunched over. She's hunched, but she's listening. Yeah. She's engaged. Uh huh. She, she just seems did. emotional. Right, but not like tail spinning out of control. And then as soon as she says spasm, she shoots up like a lightning bolt. Mm. And then you, we'll play it from there. Spasm of publicity about what happened in from Mexico to London. It was pretty rough. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Ah, weird. Hello. Um. Oh my goodness. Hello. Ew. Strong Brittany. Um. Yeah, it was a weird. Ew, I'm in the first. Can we stop? Isn't that weird how fucking quick she flipped right there? She was such a babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she definitely, she definitely like. I mean, she, you could tell she was, she was getting overly emotional too. So, but the, she started like, ooh, oh, burning. Like, what the fuck? I think she was just trying to keep herself from crying. Yeah, I th- that could have been. Um. I don't know. Like I said, they kind of you they strip you of the ability to learn how to be a human. Yeah. And that could be part of it right there where she's never been in a situation where she knows how to cry in front of somebody. Yeah. Ultimately at the at the, at the end of all this. I think that uh it's just an alternate theory. It's it's the, the- MK Ultra shit, the um the mind control stuff, but what if, man? You it's know? all sad. I mean, mental health is a big, like you know, really important thing. And if yeah, I don't think she has a healthy mental health. If, if yeah, if someone's She's not fighting through it, man. getting the right outlets and just you know, self medicating and you know, internalizing it, it's not good. And I uh, I encourage anyone listening to us if you are fighting that fight with mental health. There's a lot of outlets out there for you. There's a lot of different things you can do, but uh, don't stew on it. Don't let it hurt you. You know, I encourage you to get the help that you need. I hope you're listening, Brittany, because Rob really loves you. I could, I do. I like your music. <laughs> so that would be pretty, you know, if she was in the same room as us and you walked up to her and you're like, I think you're fucking hot. And I was like, I like your music. <laughs> I mean, I'm a lot uglier, but she'd probably go with me for the night because we cause that's flattering. She probably sure. hears she's hot all the time. But. Maybe not so much anymore, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, just look at that Instagram. She's definitely... Um, I think she's definitely still put together for a 40-year-old, she is. essentially. She's trashy hot. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but look at some of these pictures, she, man. She looks like she like smells like Cheetos and cigarettes. She looks like she dips flaming Hot Cheetos in whipped cream. <laughs> She's got some skull in her back pocket. <laughs> oh, God. But she's from, uh, you know, she's from the South. Yeah. I wish I knew where uh, the one, the video of her in the yellow was so that I could play that shit. Yeah. No. Play this one. Okay. Hi, guys. I'm in my gym today. And yes, it is the gym that I burnt down. It's still not <laughs> fixed yet, but I'm getting there. Anyhow, I'm going to show you guys what I do to work out. It's really kind of hard because there's a lot of repetition on one side. Rob, I'm, I've not watched any of these. Yeah. She sounds like she's out of her fucking pickle right here, dude. <laughs> she, I don't, I don't know why she tries to preserve that kiddish voice so hard. But you can tell it's like it's like a fake customer service voice. You know what I mean? I, I can't even put into words how crazy she... And her face, she's, her makeup's all fucked up. Her makeup is constantly like running in like every single one of her pictures. A muscle group. It's a lot like Pilates, but without the weights. And it gets hard because there's so much repetition. Anyhow. She's like shaking back and forth. Yeah, I do. I don't, I, there's something wrong with her. <laughs> <laughs> there's too much wiggle in that. There's so much, too much diggle in that dangle right Maybe there. Maybe she's an alien. She's a skinwalker. <sighs> I, I have no words. I don't, I don't know. I see what you're looking at, though. He's still a babe. <sighs> this one is, that one's just so fucking weird. She needs help, man. Yeah, big time. She needs help, for sure. Someone needs to break into her house and help her. 
So when the cops come, come tell them you heard that she needed help on the Brohio podcast. That, <laughs> don't do that, please. No, don't do that. Because that'll be the end of it. <laughs> Leave Brittany alone. That'll be the end of the Brohio podcast. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this near two-hour extravaganza. We send our love to Brittany. We do. So at the end of the day, how big is it? Jamie Spears. Not very big. We nah. can decide on that together yeah. at once. A lot, of, yep. a lot of small dick energy between him and the anti-maskers. Ton, tons of small dick energy. Yep. What do you? What's your official diagnosis at the end of the day for Britney Spears? Severe mental health issues. Uh, childhood yeah, t- that was robbed from her. Yeah. Possibly trauma. The inability to be a human. Yep. Unfortunately. I, she's she's a beautiful human at the end of the day, but I don't think she has the capability to be a human. And mm-hmm. the, the world and the people around her, in her documentary she cites that, she just says, there's so many hands grabbing into my life. So many people trying to help me that are ultimately bad people Yep, just for the fucking money, man. She's vulnerable. And if the end of the day, when dad hands the keys over to the, say this conservatorship ends and he hands the keys back over and she goes to her accountant, her, what her banker. And he says, Miss Spears, you have $497 million in your name. Then I'll say, fuck, take every fucking word I say back about that guy. Right. <laughs> so hopefully at the end of the day, he is doing his job as a good father to help her conserve her riches. And I hope that she sets her kids up for their lives. And, you know, I wish my parents would have done that for me, and they didn't. I got to <laughs> fucking work every day. <laughs> we got to come make this stupid fucking podcast. <laughs> but I do, ultimately, I hope that she's... Man, and it seems like as many times as she goes and gets help, they they don't help her. Nobody helps her. So mm-hmm. I hope that she gets the help that she needs. I hope that uh, maybe they don't want her to get the help she needs because she's a monarch in Project MK Ultra. Exactly. It all makes sense now. Yeah. All right, guys. This is the uh, end of the free Britney Spears episode. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you like it. Hopefully, you stick around and listen to some other Brohio episodes. Rob doesn't know it yet, but um, I think. Later on this week, I have, we hope to do three episodes this week, yep. right? Yep. I like the Eisenhower having the meeting with the aliens thing. Mm-hmm. That sounds really good. But Fun then stuff. also for the Dark Vault, some of you may recall, I had a coworker that might have been almost murdered by Jeffrey Dahmer. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's retired now, but I've reached out to him, and I'm hoping we can get him on the Dark Vault. Nice. That'd be cool. It would be really cool. Hear it from Because the thing is, he sounds just, he looks strikingly similar to what's the who's the the old guy in the ranch sam i don't i don't i know you're talking sam about elliot yeah yeah he looks just like him but he sounds just like him too like, <laughs> real deep southern voice yeah. beef it's what's for dinner <laughs> now sounds, sounds and looks just like him pretty cool but uh he uh he's on about five thousand medications and i've heard this dude sh- shit and it is the most monstrous <laughs> whole, wretched sounding catastrophe ever so I'm going to ask him about that on the show. He might he might hang up on us. I don't know. He may. All right. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah, thank Hope, you, guys. If this is our first time meeting you, thanks for giving us your time. We yeah. love you so much. We'd Hopefully love to have you back. Again. Yeah, definitely. Love you. 